Thank you, uh, everyone, for coming to the Cosmos SDK community call. I'm just sharing my screen real quick. How do I? Okay, there we go. So on today's agenda, we have a few things that we wanted to go through. We wanted to go through some team updates, and then also what we have planned for the second half of 2023. We are, unfortunately, already halfway through the year. So get ready for Christmas, because it's going to be like tomorrow. Um, so uh, to start, so some team updates. So the team updates are just structured about like what we're working on right now. If you have any questions, just shout out at the top of your lungs, and we can uh, we'll answer anything. Um, so to start out, uh, the simulator. So after we merged the um, the Comet O thirty eight integration, we kind of like go back into the simulator and realized that the simulator is very limiting, and the UX has been horrible for years. And so what we want to do is rewrite the simulator to have a new design. Um, Bez will be speaking briefly about that after we get through team updates in the second half of uh, 2023. But basically the idea is new simulator with a lot more functionality that it has like invariants built into it as well, or predicates, as it's mentioned in the ADR. The next thing is uh, we're working on the QA um, audit of Eden. So right now the team is picking a module, picking a package, and going through audit testing um, against the local testnet. We will be spinning up a public testnet. The first testnet will be with the Cosmos SDK. And then uh, we're working with the IBC team and the Notional team to integrate uh, IBC Go into SDK v, uh, v0.50. And so once that lands, then we'll upgrade the testnet to include IBC Go. Um, and then we're also working with the Confio team on WASMD and so once uh, that lands and we'll upgrade the testnet again to include WASMD, and that should be a longer lived testnet that will live there um, until the next, uh, the next release. And then we'll begin that process all over again so we can all treat it as a public testnet. If you wanna join, we hope to have a faucet and everything ready for everyone to um, join and play around and basically just hammer the software as hard as you can because we wanna find all the bugs. So dependency cleanup. So part of the dependency cleanup, um, so part of uh, a larger vision of what we want to do with Cosmos and the Cosmos SDK is having modules not depend on each other. Um, Eden is V0.50, yes. Um, so I guess for, for context, we kind of jumped. Um, there was a, a fun conversation we had with Confio that they recommended to like jump a few just in case something happens with 47 and there needs to be a 48, um, but also uh, the um, like the Comet 038 is such a big release with ABCI 2.0, we wanted to put the cherry on top and have a nice round number as well. So it is uh, for aesthetics um, on top of for a little reason, um, but we hope that it's easier to say than 48 and we kind of get out of this four, um, this point .4 uh, world. Does, does that make sense, Robert? Uh, yeah, thanks. Awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, the dependency cleanup. So we want to make modules not depend on each other and in the future not depend on the SDK. So they're entirely isolated. Um, there's a few larger visions there. Some of those are that modules could be used in different state machines, not only the Cosmos SDK, but then modules are able to be used across different versions of the SDK. So Matt's working on that. Um, and there will be a blog post about the learnings from that and also how other teams can do it um, and how we recommend doing it. So intermodule communication. So as we know today, uh, how you communicate between modules is via direct keeper calls. Um, this is nice, um, but it also has the downside of modules are treated as pseudo permission, which is fine because um, you can think of the SDK, like the chain code as kernel code, um, but we want to have a cleaner communication layer between modules. And so um, there was a previous ADR written um, on protobuf internal uh, intermodule communication, ADR 33. Um, and uh, yesterday we had the first call on a working group just to discuss possible design considerations and anything that has changed since the ADR has been written. If you do want to uh, tune in to the working group and also participate, help design um, and make sure all the features and all the needs of your use cases met in this design, then definitely just reach out. Um, 
you can send me a DM on Twitter or Slack or Telegram, and I'll add you to the call. So we're, we're trying to wrap up auto CLI query support. So auto CLI, um, you'll be seeing some, you may have been seeing some PRs land in the SDK that actually removes the CLI queries. Um, and now it is all basically um, auto-generated at um, when it's needed via auto CLI. And this will also be included in Hubble. Hubble I mentioned a few times on, um, Hubble I mentioned a few times on what it does. But in short, it's just a tool to interact with all Cosmos chains in the future via auto CLI and via gRPC reflection. We're also trying to wrap up the design of the new accounts module. So the, the thought around the accounts module is accounts handles accounts and authentication is handled by the auth module or a new auth n module. And the, really the goal here is to allow, first of all, chains to design their own accounts um, and to do different forms of account abstraction. Second of all, uh, the overarching, one of the, one of the key things is we want to allow accounts to use different credential types. So it's not only public private key cryptography, and we've been working on a design for the accounts. The RFC is open and you can give it a read. And then there's an auth RFC as well that you can also give a read. Um, but the goal is, like I mentioned, allow chains to define their own account types. Um, allow public key uh, uh, key rotation, so you can you, you can migrate an existing account, even a multi-sig, to an to the new accounts module, and you can create your own custom multi-sig that's happening on chain. It really cleans up cleans up the user experience around uh, multi-sigs today, but also create custom vesting um, account types without needing to fork the vesting module itself. Um, there's a working group there as well. Um, if you want to join or join the Slack channel, definitely just give me a DM and I can invite you and you can participate and help out on the design and architecture of the new and upcoming accounts module and the authentication module. Any questions so far on the team updates? Awesome, awesome. So what do we have planned for the second half of the year? So like I mentioned, it is June, and so we're beginning the second half of the year, and um, we're already thinking of like what will what will we want to achieve in the second half of the year. And so here, um, we are discussing what the release pipeline will be. So as you've seen, like we had a release a couple months ago with 047 with the Twilight release. Now we have the Eden release coming up pretty soon as well. In the future, the release timeline won't be as close. The reason why we did it so close was because uh, we wanted to get Comet 38 ABCI++, ABCI 2.0 out the door to the users as fast as possible because this was a highly requested feature from many chains. Um, and so this is why you're seeing this release happen a lot faster, but there is the potential that the next release, the next major release, um, will be closer to the end of the year. Um, this does not mean that like there won't be uh, releases of uh, the Go modules that are already spun out or will be spun out, so those may have their own release cycle but the finer overarching completion of this next large uh, work scope will be closer to the end of the year. Now, what is that like large work scope that will land at the end of the year? What does that, what does that actually entail? So the thing I'm most excited about, and I think a lot, of the, a lot of the team is very excited about, is runtime modules. So what runtime modules are is the ability to, uh, the ability to, um, so let me, let me think over it. So right now, today we have base app, and base app encapsulates many things. It encapsulates the mempool, how we interact with storage, how we interact with consensus, how we interact, how, how we interact with Comet, and all these things. And um, as we've been seeing in the in the broader ecosystem, there is actually a need to like uh, allow users to not only define their own uh, header type or block uh, structure, but also define. Um, a different consensus engine. So a different consensus engine could even be a consensus engine that doesn't have consensus, so something like Rollkit. Rollkit is already integrating into the SDK, but we want to make their lives easier for integrating into the SDK and allow the SDK to really transcend the Cosmos stack and be really used outside of Cosmos as well. And so some of this, there'll be a, like a runtime consensus interface, a runtime a mempool interface, a runtime query interface, and those interfaces and, and a few more, like server, client, will be defined. And then Comet, um, so we want to isolate Comet at a lower layer so IBC and SDK can also 
um, don't, don't have a direct reliance on Comet. And so when we want to update Comet, we can do it a lot more efficiently instead of a large refactor like we did for 038. Um, and so that's a, a large refactor of the base core layer of the SDK. Cleans up an immense amount of tech debt. And we're super excited because that's going to enable a lot of new use cases. And it's going to bring a lot more performance to users. Um, and so we've been working very closely with the Veritrain uh, folks, specific, specifically um, Devin, about potential designs around runtime modules. They're really pushing the base app design to the edge. And so we're, we're getting a lot of learnings from them on how to redesign base app and runtime modules to be more freeing and more and have the ability to play around and build something that may not be thought of today with the stack. And, he, and so the working group will commence in roughly two weeks. Why two weeks? It's basically we want to uh, we want to get through a lot of this QA process that we're in right now and not um, introduce a new working scope right away. And then so we're hoping in two weeks we're a decent portion of the way through the QA process and then we'll be able to commence the design working group for runtime modules where we'll discuss APIs, use cases, features that people would want. I do invite the, the more the merrier there. So um, even if you're, if you, even if it doesn't sound too interesting to you, I do invite you because um, any feedback, um, any eyes on the APIs will be immensely powerful for us because we want to make sure we're accounting for everything. Um, well, everything is impossible, but accounting for most everything out there that users can think of that they would like to build as advanced users. Any questions there? Is there already like any description for that, or it's still like rather in there? Um, so right now, uh, I, I can share with you. Uh, we have like a high-level product document, like uh, what is the overview, what is the phases. The phases are still like phase one is roughly defined as ADR working group, and then phase two and three are going to be to uh, our TBD based off the outcome of phase one. But it's also what are we what are we thinking for like future use cases? What is the goals? What are the objectives? of this work and why we are doing it. Um, I, I, we have a doc on that, so I can share that with you later. Yeah, please, thanks. Awesome, awesome. Um, sweet, so the next, uh, next large refactor or large rewrite is storage. So um, in Q1 of this year, we merged a ADR for the refactor of storage. And the reason why we didn't begin on it right away is because we wanted to get Eden out the door with ABCI 2.0. So once we get that out the door, the storage refactor, so Bez and John will be working on that. And anyone, if you guys want to participate, there's been a lot of um, ideas floating around and designs floating around that people want to play with. And so we want to, um, like more the merrier here as well, like uh, any contributors are welcome. And so we'll be working on that. The goal is here that we can, before we have the final release of the storage refactor, we can already be testing it on mainnet. Um, for example, the new IVL work that we are doing that uh, completed this last quarter, um, we're testing it on mainnet. Um, we're testing it on Juno, and we're going to be looking to test it on Edmos because they have a fairly large storage. And while profiling the node, we, we saw some stuff, and we'd be interested to see how it changes with the new IVL rewrite. And so we want to keep that going where storage is tested on mainnet mainnets if possible. Any questions on storage? Awesome. Sweet. Next, we have the intermodal communication. Like I mentioned already, um, the working group has started, and it's based off ADR 33. And we're working on that to be able to move forward and unlock new, unlock a new way of writing Cosmos SDK modules. Um, I won't touch too much into that just because I already touched on to it. Same thing with the simulator. Um, Bez is going to be touching on the simulator after, after this. But next, we also have the most interesting stuff, and it's starting to dive into module refactors. So the staking module, um, we want to refactor it. Um, the design is, we haven't thought through the design yet. We kind of see this happening or beginning more in the autumn of this year or the fall. Uh, and so we want to uh, refactor or rewrite staking, the staking module. And some of those modules that, the, that are kind of tied to staking right now are mint distribution slashing and evidence. 
It's still unknown if we will be touching those modules as part of the staking module refactor, but there is a likelihood that we will. Um, and so once that work commences, then we'll be able to uh, invite everyone to the working groups to make sure we're covering the designs of staking. There's been a ton of research that has been put out there over the past four years since the staking module has been written. And so we're gonna be looking at um, getting that done and out the door by the end of uh, 2023. Next, we want to complete the accounts module. So we're currently working on the finalizing design. So something that uh, when I say accounts module is kind of like uh, ambiguous because it's actually accounts and authentication and the integration and for end users. And so we're, we've been talking with wallets like Kepler, um, the Sam Hart from the Skip team has been like joining, has been joining our working group calls in order so we can define a trajectory to get it integrated, but also um, make sure use cases are met based off users' needs. Um, if you do have any use cases that um, maybe we haven't covered, definitely reach out or anything that you think of. We've been talking a lot about some of the ERCs in the Ethereum space uh, that be, that are becoming more and more popular and making sure those, are, those can be done, but also looking at the recent work from Larry on his account abstraction module um, and a lot of that design, the design that he went with is actually um, overlapping with the design that we had in, or not overlapping, but the, 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 his objective of the module that he created can be achieved with the accounts module as well. And so we've been talking to him about that as well. Um, sweet. So I'm guessing there, there are no questions, so I might skip asking, and then uh, unless there is one. Um, otherwise, we can jump to the simulator ADR from Bez. Bez, you want to take it away? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, sure. So, I mean, I'll post the link to the ADR PR in the chat. Um, so the kind of scope of the simulator refactor, or V2 if you want to call it, um, is really to kind of um, rethink the way the simulator works from the ground up. Um, if you work with the simulator that exists today, or if you're familiar with it in any capacity, you're probably familiar with the fact that it generates what are known as operations that are pseudo-randomly picked and executed. Um, and then through that kind of mechanism, you're able to test things like non-determinism, uh, exporting and importing states, um, and essentially allows you to kind of debug and fuzz test your application. Um, however, with the advent of ABCI++, it really doesn't kind of fit in that paradigm anymore, um, namely because uh, over the past few months, there's been some notable changes to the SDK, uh, things like AppSide mempools, uh, prepare and process proposal, and now vote extensions and the Eden release. So all these things are completely outside of the scope of the simulator today. So we kind of want to bring these two things into parity. Um, and in this ADR, which doesn't really have um, a ton of, I guess, pseudocode or APIs, uh, but does kind of outline the, the intent and purpose of what we're trying to do, which I'll, I'll briefly go over. Um, so we're going to, the proposal is to essentially write a new module uh, in the SDK instead of refactoring the existing one. Um, and this new module will be, it'll, it'll essentially reflect um, kind of a real application life cycle. Um, you'll have actual calls to ABCI methods. You'll make use of the AppSide mempool. And it'll essentially be a way to have the simulator act as if it was running in a real, real world production network. So some of the features and aspects that we want to include, um, again, include like reflecting ABCI lifecycle, uh, selecting transactions from, from the mempool, as opposed to kind of generating them randomly through um, a kind of pseudo block simulator that exists today, uh, actually executing all the ABCI methods, um, having like first class support for, for profiling, um, also support for uh, breakpoints and the ability to pause and resume simulations 
and just better ergonomics in, uh, in general around rerunning simulations uh, given, you know, given faults um, and things like that. So um, we'll also be touching a little bit on the notion of invariance. So you're probably familiar with invariance. They exist on chain, but aren't really used, um, but primarily used within the simulator itself. Invariants are just a way to kind of like check that the state of a module is what you think it should be. Um, the way the simulator uses these today is it runs these invariants every so often, every n blocks in particular. Um, what we want to kind of transition towards is removing these from production code paths, instead having them just reside solely in uh, the simulator. Um, and the way they would work is kind of similar to the way they work today, except we would kind of give greater control to the application developer to define validity predicates that are executed before and after blocks and perhaps even before and after uh, each, each transaction. So uh, those would be exposed and configured by, uh, by the application as well. Um, as far as like DevUX and like API breakage, we hope to have a pretty minimized, um, you know, modules will probably still need to implement a way to generate messages, uh, pseudo random messages, but they could both be valid and invalid. We want to test the whole array of, of the uh, of the state machine. So um, that's kind of the scope and, and goal of, of uh, the simulator, the new simulator package. Any Any thoughts or questions? Does it make sense to, to, to people? No? OK. <laughs> so Christine is asking, is there going to be anything to replace mainnet and variance on Gravity? We put a lot of work into making the chain actually halt if a variance fails, and we want to keep that functionality. So yeah, so we, we are looking at. Um, so of course the simulator will we want the simulator to incorporate the invariance so when we're running simulations we can also test it the invariant sorry oh, um then the variance on mainnet we're still discussing this on how to incorporate it into the circ potentially the circuit breaker um or potentially into a different module so invariants can still live on mainnet if if people do want that yes just curious, um, you say you put a lot of work into making the chain actually halt. Uh, could you talk on that a little bit? I'm going to turn my mic on for this because it's a bit yeah. long-winded. Um, so we had to set up uh, something that in our like root.go to make sure people were actually running invariants if they didn't specify the um, the invariant check period, we would randomly generate one from a list of primes that are like under 200 to make sure they're actually running them. I did a lot of testing with the crisis module to submit messages. And I'm guessing it's something related to Circuit Breaker where we couldn't get the chain to actually halt. It would just revert the message. Um, so yeah, we, we tried to coordinate things with our validators to make sure they chose an invariant that they like, or the, uh, an invariant check period that they liked. And then we also randomly generated them if people uh, didn't specify a flag. Did you see any, out of curiosity, did you see any like performance, performance hits on running the invariants on certain nodes? Um, yeah, we definitely saw some performance uh, issues. People are missing blocks occasionally. We carefully chose numbers, uh, especially like we, we were helping validators who were having issues with that, where they were missing a few too many blocks for their comfort um, to choose higher numbers and like how to mitigate that sort of risk while still trying to maintain that the the chain will halt within like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Um, so yeah, we were we were careful about it, um, but not overly formal. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any like uh, feature wants from the new simulator? Um, is there 
Yeah, I think there were there were a couple issues that people opened. I don't know if the authors are here about um, getting a invariant, uh, changing the simulator to do X, Y, and Z. I have a question like uh, about the like, ability to run it in parallel. If you guys thought about it, so for example, like at least in how it's done today, you could run like simulation for every module in parallel, theoretically. I mean, set up the different app and run like, you know, for each app in parallel, uh, for each module in like, separate app in parallel. I think that's a, that's a good point, because I think that the, currently the simulator runs like each, it runs each module in the, independently, um, or it has, the, it has the option to do it. Um, as, did you put some thought to that? I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know what parallel modules means. In the no in parallel the modules, like running. So today, like there is no dependency between simulation of module A to the simulation of module B. So technically, you could set up, um, let's say, a few apps, and like in first up here to run simulation for module a and b for the second c and d and so on um so the proposal that i've put up is essentially a simulation of an app in its entirety right like you you pro you generate random transactions you put them in the mempool and then you essentially essentially just simulate the AB, entire abci flow so the notion of all right Simulating a module doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. you're, you're just simulating essentially block production. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, yeah. How do you? I mean, then how does how is it composed? Like, do you like randomly query for a new transaction for each module? No. So you would generate random transactions. You would call check TX, put them in the mempool, and then you would call the ABCI flow. So you'd call, you'd pick a random proposer, you would call prepare proposal, and then you would, from at that point onwards, it's no different from a real network. Right. The, only, I mean, the difference is you're just, the, the inputs are randomized. Right, I mean, what I was trying to ask is like, you know, the app doesn't know about the transactions, how to generate the transaction, right? Only module knows. That's correct, yes. So. So, so you would like to you know query random module for okay, give me a new transaction, and then you like randomly pick another module. Okay, give me another transaction. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what do you think? Uh, just how I would see it, but <laughs> it was like open question in fact for you, rather. I mean, there's, I there's many ways. Like if if you want to like you know. Like really randomize it that you know we don't have like specific assumption you, how these transactions are created. Yeah, I mean there's there's a handful of ways you could go about it. You could say, hey, I want to generate n transactions from every single module and put them in the mempool. Call check TX and put them in the mempool. I want to generate random number from a random subset of modules. Um you know, there's there's a there's a handful of ways that we could go about it. Um, yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what what people think would lead to better better outcomes in the sense of like what gives us more breadth of of uh, of test coverage. Um, you know, maybe picking a fixed number of transactions from all modules might be the easiest and most straightforward way, but we could also explore like randomized subsets of modules. But that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know, I would like to think of, because you know, like the simulation test can take a long of time. So it would be good to like think also how, how mm -hmm. we could paralyze it. Yeah, well, I imagine the transaction generation part isn't what actually takes all the time, but it could be. 
You know, and if it is, that part will be paralyzed. Yeah, generation not. It's like the whole. I mean, at least today, right? Like the whole suit takes a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Adu is asking: Does this mean there will be no standalone simulation codes for each module if we directly generate transactions? So I think there's still. I think there will still be code within modules that generate the random messages, what I think are called operations today. Uh, we just want to improve the UX around that process. We also want to remove the, the whole notion of weights. Um, we want to like, essentially reduce the amount of, of boilerplate and code that each each module needs, needs to write uh, and have that live directly in the simulation mo uh, module or package. Generation yeah, wait, wait. at a time, you need to look up and get random references. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. So, you know, um, given that these are all reads, I think uh, we can totally parallelize that process. Yeah, speaking about the weights, um, it's kind of also related to the end to end tests. Like mm -hmm. Most of the code, in fact, you know. Like in the end-to-end -end test, to rely on like waiting, so you need to wait for, um, like you know, the block being processed, uh, which like makes the whole end-to-end -end test, I mean, usable, but it's also super slow and not efficient, right? Because like in the end of the day, I was like even like profiling once our end-to-end -end tests, and really most of the time it's waiting. <laughs> really. Yeah, because like often in end to end test, you basically call wait. Yes, to basically get the, yeah, um, the transaction done. The simulator won't be, won't have a similar fate to that because we're not like, we're not querying state and then performing an action. You know, we're just literally executing blocks one after another. And then, you know, there, there will be validity checks, which could take time, um, depending on how an app decides to implement them. But yeah, Lauren says Comet Mock might be able to alleviate the end-to-end -end test delays. I'm not familiar with Comet Mock, but that looks like it might be useful in the context of end-to-end -end tests. Do you have a link? I don't. Uh, not handy. I know uh, Philip uh, has been working on that. Um, but I can try to find something. Yeah, I think the way end-to-end -end tests work today is we actually start uh, an, a, a real tenement or a comment process, um, single node process. If that can be mocked, like, well, there's multiple validators. There's yeah, there's multiple there's multiple val validators, but um, um, we communicate with one. All right. And yeah, a lot of the wait time comes from, you know, waiting for blocks to be committed so that, you know, queries and further transactions can be made. Um, like for us, we even, even like recently make a, a label and the update in the GitHub actions to check like you know if the label is there don't run the end-to-end -end tests and this is usually when you like you know do something like you are certain that shouldn't be mm -hmm. end-to-end test like uh, at least in the SDK the end-to-end tests are getting quite a bit faster I mean also the the, the it's too prime because like our end-to-end tests are like a bit of duplicate code and so we're rewriting them and so it's getting faster but uh because we're, re we're removing duplicates, um, and then we plan on writing it in a more complex fashion. Or do you mean removing duplicates, like removing tra some transactions, removing some tests? Well, when you say end-to-end, -end, are you talking about simulations or like end-to-end -end no. tests? end-to-end. -end. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, just like the, the tests within the SDK end-to-end tests, some, some are duplicates of existing unit and integration tests. Okay, so you basically remove like the whole transaction or the whole test. Yeah, sometimes we remove the whole test, sometimes we augment it to what we actually want to test it within the module. 
Right, okay, so it makes the scope smaller for the test, but like doesn't in fact improve the framework. Sweet. Is that everything? Um, does anyone else have any like requests from uh, for the simulator work? Sweet. Yeah, maybe one more. Like, do you think do you think yeah. that the simulator could be also like run? I mean, would it make sense to make like this whole simulator thing uh, kind of like a you know bigger work with end to end? Test framework, so like combine those two things and make it like generally better. Or you rather think that you know that should be separate? Uh, I mean, that's a good question. Um, I think my initial thought is like separate because, like with the simulator, it's like more like oh, fuzzing a bit, a little bit of fuzzing and benchmarking and stuff like this. While the end to end is like maybe we want to test a specific thing, um, but I think there is. There's overlap in some area, um, but I do think having them be two distinct things is also very powerful. So you can have two, right? Like in a simulator, you can have like you know hard code certain like set of transactions, and then you know have random transactions as well. Yeah, I mean we we could do that with like how like normal like how GoFuzz kind of works. Um, you feed it like a seed, um, or you feed it initial data or like data you want to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then that could very well be an avenue. What do you think, guys? My intuition tells me that I, I agree they should be separate. I'm having a difficult time creating a mental model of what they would look like if they were the same thing, just because they kind of are have two really distinct responsibilities. Um, not to say that it can't be possible, but it just it doesn't make sense to me off the bat, intuitively. Um, yeah. Thanks for posting the link, Lauren. Oh, this is a uh, community contribution. He works for informal. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, maybe we can check this out. It might speed things up. I do. Uh, one thing I noticed when I write uh, when I wrote a simulation calls for instruments and gravity bridge is that uh, most uh, uh, most of the simulation operations only cover the good cases. Uh, so we don't cover the unhappy pass. Yeah, will we uh, revise the situation? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when you when you say unhappy pass, what do you mean? Uh, I mean, some messages should just uh, fail or sh should just uh, yeah, yeah. Or the, so, so yes, that's a good question. The ADR describes the the it is it is it describes that very that very statement. So so long as a transaction passes check TX, it will be inserted in the mempool regardless if the, me the messages succeed or not. So what that means is we will select transactions for block proposals that may have invalid uh, messages. So that essentially means that we'll be testing both happy paths and sad paths. Um, so we'll get we'll get greater coverage in uh, in the simulation uh, in the simulation paths. In addition, I think one thing that we would also like to do is really improve the output and logging of the simulator. So like you'll have a better understanding of like how many messages succeeded, how many failed, from which modules they failed, and things like that. So that is something we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely do and support. Awesome. Oh. Perfect. Yeah, definitely I, I think the simulator has been a been a hot topic for a bit and now I think is a better time than ever.
especially with some of these larger refactors coming coming in down the pipeline that we have a simulator that can fully test out every aspect of the code. Sweet. Does anyone have anything else they would like to discuss? We went, we got through the agenda. We have 18 minutes left. Any questions, any concerns, or anything that you just want to share with the community? Question. Is there going to be a uh, retrospective of the Barberry incident from last week? Yes, uh, we will We will be posting a post-mortem. We're waiting on one or two chains to fully upgrade, and then we'll be releasing the, the post-mortem as well. And then the, also the finders of the bug will also be releasing in blog post. Can we return proofs with gRPC query? Right now, um, proofs over gRPC query are not supported, but we're working on a path to support them. So uh, unfortunately, well, I, unfortunately, you have to use uh, ABCI query, but ABCI query is also um, replicated onto um, replicated onto the gRPC. So there is a ABCI query endpoint that you could use to return proofs as well. But for individual queries, you cannot. Yeah, we. There's proofs for like direct key value queries, but for the um, complex queries, we don't have them yet. Like pagination supported on ABCI query or? Yeah, so on ABCI. Um, on ABCI query, you, you don't necessarily, I don't believe you need pagination because you can only request a key and you can't request a range of keys. So it should just be like uh, just one one response instead of like a hundred responses. Amazing, amazing. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right, guys. Have a good weekend. Enjoy. Get some sun. Oh, uh, Anmol wanted to, just wanted to share a tool that we've been working on with Cosmology. Oh yes, uh, idea is to have a simple config file to setting up infra then run and then to and then tests against it. So this is, uh, Cosmology wrote a tool called Starship to do end to end tests um, and in CI and also uh, local. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. We're, we're looking at it also from the SDK. Um, I've been reading the documentation and a few other people as well. And so it's definitely a super, super cool tool. Cool what is cosmology? Uh, what is or who is? What? Uh, cosmology is a company in the ecosystem that started out with from JavaScript. Um, they primarily focus on JavaScript and they're one of the um, maintainers of Cosm.js and... Oh, isn't this a, that's the telescope? From who? Telescope? Yeah. yeah. Oh, perfect. Awesome, awesome. Sweet. Then everyone have a good weekend. Enjoy, enjoy the summer weather if you are somewhere warm. If not, then I guess keep building. Ciao, ciao. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Bye.